Summer is heating up the streets of New York. How are people keeping cool during the sweltering heat? Ice cream is one way. A unique Argentinian ice cream shop is nestled in the West Village. And in one of the busiest cities in the world, it's much easier to get around with one of New York's staples, the Yellow Taxi. From our studios in Soho, this is NYFA News. Hello and welcome to NYFA News. I'm Roger Richardson. And I'm Sherry Jamkou. We begin tonight with a look at the top stories. Israel and Palestine hold peace talks and are trying to negotiate a peace treaty. U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry announced the news after meeting both parties. He says the talks will seek to give birth to an independent Palestinian state nine months from now. Kerry says the goal is ambitious and the history of failed talks daunting, but the consequences of not trying are worse. Mayoral candidate Anthony Weiner vows to stay in the race and will not quit for New York City mayor. Weiner's message comes after the poll shows he has dropped to fourth place in the Democratic field. He has rejected calls to quit the race, even as public opinion polls show his support fading. And meanwhile, despite the booming market, it's taken a full year for Facebook shares to rise above the $38 flotation level for the first time since they began trading. The world's largest social networking saw its price rise just over 1%, giving the company a market valuation of $92 billion. And new revelations on just how much the U.S. has been tracking its own citizens. Turns out the government not only knows who you call, but where you surf on the Internet, too. During the winter, we can't wait for summer to arrive so we can bask in the rays of the sun and enjoy the weather. But what do people do when it gets too hot? Donna Mantar hits the streets to find out. New York City heated up during the great heat wave of 2013. It was topic A for everybody. What have you been doing during the heat wave? Because we had like five days of just brutal heat. Honestly, I, I worked a lot in the heat wave and uh, that was tough. You know, because nothing you can do about it. You can't really run and hide or, or, you know, hang on an air conditioner all day. If you can, that's great, but I couldn't, so that's what I did. I just kind of chilled out and bend out of the heat. Uh, well, I don't mind. Uh, we had a very um, rigid, uh, winter, you know, so a lot of, and raining, so I'm actually, we like it, and we spend time at the What are you doing today? This is a cool bike. Um, I'm riding on my bike to go in the park, and then my mommy's gonna call Gloria, and then I'm gonna go to my friend Gloria's house. Ooh, cool. So, what have you been doing during the summer? Have you gone swimming? Do you play in the park? I play in school, and then I go in the sprinklers. Ooh, that's really cool to keep cool because it's really hot outside, right? Yeah. Enjoy the last month of summer as winter is quickly approaching. Dana Matar, NYFA News. This was the worst heat wave in over a decade. Back in 2002, New Yorkers suffered through an awful 12 days of over 100 degree heat. And every day in New York's yellow cabs are out there. The law also says the AC has to work. Even so, it's hard work for the cabbies. The humble taxi cab is one of New York City's icons. It's vital to getting around, and riders plonk down more than five and a half million dollars in cabs every day. Gabriel Diaz is a cabbie in his mid-thirties. Uh, I work 12 hours a day, usually. This, today's Friday, so it's going to be very busy out there. So usually I work about 12 hours straight. Now during the weekdays, like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, I only work like maybe 9, 10 hours because it's not that moving at the, at the midnight, it gets pretty slow out there, so yeah. The cabbies I spoke to can now make a decent living. That's if they put in the hard work. Diaz seems to be doing well this summer. For him, his income is enough to support himself and his family. I'm happy. I'm a little happy, you know, the fact that I'm young and I have a lot of endurance, so, you know, I stay longer. You know, today I expected to make maybe over 300 for myself after everything. So, you know, I mean, I, this is not that bad of a job. You know, at least I'm making more money than a person working at McDonald's or at Payless or whatever. Yeah, so I can't complain. Can't complain. Diaz says that being a cab driver in such a large city is always interesting because he gets to meet celebrities and many different people from around the world. And then there's the not-so-glamorous side of it. 
I'd love to be a taxi driver in New York City. You get to see everything, meet a lot of different people. Can you tell me some interesting experiences you may have had? Well, just a few weeks ago, a woman threw up in my cab. Okay. That's yeah, so I had to kick her out of my cab, so I had to clean it. Diaz says being friendly and taking pride in his cab means extra money and tips for him. A real New Yorker knows that the New York experience wouldn't be complete without sitting in the backseat of a taxi cab. In the near future, redesigned taxi cabs will be seen on the streets. Taxi features will include a GPS system and a ramp that provides safe wheelchair securing. And with the new smartphone app, taxis are even easier to find across the city, now allowing customers to e-hail taxis. Just think what life would be like without the cabs. It's inconceivable. I can't even imagine getting around the city without a cab. After the break, experiencing a touch of Middle Eastern culture in this diverse city. Hookahs, Arabic food, and a great time. This is the holy month of the year for Muslims, Ramadan, where they fast from sunrise to sunset. But when it's time to break fast every evening, it's a high calorie celebration. Donna Matar reports. With New York City having the second largest Arab American population in the U.S., the culture peaks through the city in the Middle Eastern restaurants and lounges. Horace Cafe is a Middle Eastern and Mediterranean restaurant located in the East Village. During the holy month of Ramadan only, they offer delicious homemade Arabic desserts such as kunafa, omali, and lugaymat, which are a big hit with people of all cultures. The famous hookah is a huge hit over here too. Muslims come here to break their fast in an Arabic environment, and Horse Cafe stays open until 5 a.m. during Ramadan, so people fasting can eat their last meal before sunrise. Arabic food, hookahs, and cultural ambiance, people enjoy experiencing something different in the city. Dana Matar, NYFA News. It's only a few hours till sunset. I can't wait. Is there room for one more? Speaking of delicious, everyone loves ice cream. And especially during these hot summer months, who doesn't want to indulge in something cold? But this isn't just any old ice cream. This is much cooler. Bleecker Street in New York's West Village is famous for its food. From pizzerias to seafood and even sushi, make sure you don't miss this delicious hidden gem. Cone's Ice Cream Artisans. This authentic Argentinian ice cream parlor is routinely named the city's best. And if the awards don't convince you, well, it's also kid approved. With 32 delicious choices and homemade waffle cones, it's hard to pick just one flavor. Tiramisu is this summer's best seller, an Italian-inspired espresso blended ice cream. But there are many more to choose from, even with a slippery slope of strawberry staring me down. There's just one that I simply can't resist. Pistachio. Mmm, mmm. Established more than 10 years ago, Cones continues to pack the flavorful punch New Yorkers love to look for. Fair warning about Cones, you can't get your ice cream fixed there in the morning. They don't open till 1, but it's well worth the wait. When we come back, working out, playing sports, and just relaxing all in one place. Roger, I noticed you've been working out. Have you been going to the gym? Working out in a gym can get a little stuffy. But Chelsea Park offers a way to get into shape and enjoy the summer sun at the same time. Chelsea Park offers many activities for New Yorkers to enjoy in the summer. Handball and basketball games are a daily occurrence. But increasingly, it's the outdoor gymnasium that's growing in popularity.
Equipped with inverted benches, lateral bars, and various pull-up stations, this park is a haven for those looking to avoid crowded and expensive gyms. Whether your workouts are calisthenics or something more aggressive, people of all ages are using this playground for grown-ups. With little or no wait time and plenty of space, workout enthusiasts just love what Chelsea Park has to offer. From beginner to expert, all are welcome in the public park. More traditional games such as handball and soccer are also featured in the park and serve as great ways to get in summer shape. And the best thing about Chelsea Park, it's free. That's our show for tonight. Thanks for watching. For NYFA News, I'm Roger Richardson. And I'm Sherry Jampru, wishing you a pleasant evening and a great weekend.